Hi there guys and welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about something a little bit different and not actually involve any of my spiders directly. What I wanted to discuss today was the idea of documentation. Now what do I mean by documentation? Well, I mean two things in this instance. Firstly, the use of file cards. And secondly, the extraction, the examination and the keeping of the exuvia or the malts. The first method of documentation I wish to discuss with you is the use of file cards. Now what, I hear you cry, are file cards? The little slips of paper, like this, try and get lined ones if you can, available from all good stationers, some very good bookstores, places like Smith's basically. Now what I do with these, if I show you the example card, is this. In the top left, whenever I get a new spider I fill in one of these. Top left I write the scientific name. Top right is the country of origin. As soon as it arrives, as I said, I create one of these cards, acquired on, uh, acquired as, spiderling, juvenile, sub-adult, adult female or mature male, on 30th of June, whatever. If and when the spider molts, that goes straight on the card as well. So, molted, the date it molts, and then beneath or besides that, I write the leg span of the molt, not the spider of the molt, in inches and in centimetres. I give both inches and centimetres, simply because some people work in inches, some work in centimetres, it's, it's less confusing. Now, as an example, if I just show you an actual example card, my beloved Selena Cosmia dichromata. Scientific name, country of origin, New Guinea. She arrived as an adult on July 2009. I couldn't remember the exact date when I bought these cards, so I've just written July. We then know that she molted on the 24th of September 2009 and that the molt had a leg span of 5 inches or 13 centimetres. Upon examining the exuvia, she was confirmed as a female. The second thing I wanted to discuss was the extraction and the examination of the exuvia, the malt itself. Now the extraction is a fairly simple ordeal. All you do is take a long pair of forceps and carefully remove it. Don't worry if the legs are a bit damaged or if the malt feels dry or crispy. I'm going to show you how to prepare it now. Simply get yourself a nice shallow dish, a bowl, tray, whatever, and fill it with uh, lukewarm water, just nice and warm to the touch. Get a good a household detergent, uh, washing up liquid, and just a couple of drops onto the surface of the water. With your finger, just swirl it around a little bit. You certainly don't want this really soapy, you just want a little tiny bit in there. Take your malt, as you can hear this is probably a little bit crispy. This one's been done before. This is my uh, Grandma Stola Rosé. I just carefully pop that in get it into the water. Just gently submerge it and then leave that there to soak for a few for about half an hour. This malt has now been sat there for a good 30 minutes. It's completely soaked as you can see it's quite soft. Now this point you can give it a nice tarantula-esque pose, and you'll see why later. But while that's there, uh, just drying down a little bit, there's the three tools you're going to want to have with you. A pin of some sort, even if it's just a drawing pin from your notice board, or in this case it's a wall nail, you know, a picture nail, banging up uh, pictures. And then a couple of forceps. For these I use my flat paddle forceps, and standard straight. Now, what you're going to want to do is, as I said, pose it, simply move the legs around very gently because it's very fragile, using your forceps, give it a nice spidery pose. Take your uh, the important part for sexing is taking your nail, your pin or whatever, find the abdomen and very carefully just work it open with the pin. 
actually use these as well. Just very carefully open it out. If it's a fresh malt, just sliding the pin down usually opens it out. I'm going to sit here and have to redo this one because it's dried before. This is the second time I'm doing it with this malt. I'll just open it out and continue the video from there. Once you've expanded the epistosoma, the abdomen, the first thing you want to look for are these four little white marks. Those are the book lungs. Those are how your tarantula breathes. Now between the foremost pair, that's the pair closest to the prosoma, the body if you will, between those first two, there should be a little ridge. That's the, gynal, uh, the epigynal plate. What you're looking for is, on that ridge, a little like leaf, almost, to fold up from it. I'll see if I can put pictures up in a moment and show you the kind of thing you're looking for. If you see that leaf, that's the epigastric furrow. You've just confirmed your spider is a female. If it's not there, it doesn't mean you've got a male. The absence of the epigastric furrow could mean you've got an immature female, could mean you've got a male. It's not a positive identification for males, it's a positive identification for females, but a lack of it is not an identification for anything. While we wait for that to dry, I'm going to show you what I do next. I take a cricket tub, a couple of pieces of uh, toilet paper, and pop those in the bottom. On the side, I write the species and the date of the malt. And then on the lid, I'll just get a bit of paper to put behind that so you can see. Again, I write the scientific name, followed by the common name, confirmed female. I then give the date of the malt and the leg spam. It's just a nice visual record as well to go with your file cards. When the malt is dry, you then pop it inside and I stack it up the top there. You can probably see just up here. I have all my malts stacked up there, except for a few. Now, another little fun thing you can do with your malts is pop down to a local hobby craft store or any other similar stores and pick up a frame. Now these frames go back about half an inch. It's got a sheet of glass on the front and then like a wooden frame around it. You take the back off and you glue a malt. You put a little dab of hot glue on, on the board. Gently press the back foot into it. Very carefully lift up the front foot. Pop another blob of glue there. Glue it down. And here we've got all three of uh, the malts that my bee Smithy has done in the time that we've had her. And underneath is a little sticker that says Brachypalma smithi, Mexican red knee, 11th of February 2009, 5 centimetres. 23rd of March 2009, 7.5 centimetres. 17th of July 2009, 10 centimetres. Below it are then my two Brachypalma auratum. So Brachypalma auratum, Mexican flame knee, 13th of January 2009, 11 centimetres. 7th of July 2009, 15 centimetres. It just makes a nice little display. I have that hanging up next to my tarantulas that are out of the uh, shelving units. And it just makes a nice little centrepiece in your room. Or, and it's a nice, again, visual progression. Here, you can very clearly see how my uh, Brachypalma smith eye has grown. From the tiny, tiny little uh, juvenile up to now a sub-adult. So there we go. I hope that's given you some ideas and some inspiration. Or if not, at least some tips in manipulating the exuvia once you've extracted them from the enclosure. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. See you soon.